Hi everyone and welcome to Erica Vision. We just want to take a minute and come on and do five tips that we are learning before we pull out. Now I know we don't look like your normal RVers, but we are excited for this new adventure. And so we're gonna be going over five tips of what we are learning as we are preparing for this new chapter in our lives as empty nesters, which I can still hardly believe that that is a thing for us. So let's get into tip number one. Okay, you guys, tip number one, be realistic about the space that you're moving into. One of the things we are finding that is proven to be very hard is downsizing, okay? Even though right now we just have a two bedroom apartment, we have a lot of stuff. And I can tell you, I've made about three trips to the Goodwill and it, it seemed like it multiplied when I got back. Okay, so it was like, it, it was still there. And so I've been thinning out my clothes, which seems to be growing. I didn't even think I had that many clothes. Yeah, I didn't think you had that many. But my goodness. Okay, one thing I'm not getting rid of is my shoes. I'm not doing that. Okay, yeah, about, a lot of shoes. About 20 pairs of vans, so I'm not giving those away. But I went through like jeans and shorts and t-shirts and stuff that you just, you know, you're not wearing. If I, have, if I haven't put it on in the last six months, I got rid of it. But I still have like six totes of things. And so that is proving to be kind of difficult to downsize. Um, not only the fact that we have like a little small business we run from home, we have stuff for that stuff. And so a lot of stuff. trying to figure out what to keep, uh, what is just extra stuff that I have, you know, just in case I have an idea and I want to do something with or I guess what's pertinent, what, what can we pick up later if we need it versus getting rid of now. Like I have more glitter than I should, than one person should. And so the box of glitter, very true. it's hard to get rid of it because you've invested so much of your money into it. And I think also those things, they make money too. You know, the, the reason, the way we look at things are, uh, Especially being that those were some of the things when we started the business that was um, kind of like a mistake for us where, you know, we would throw away the extra vinyl, the smaller pieces, you know, thinking that we might not use those pieces, but we quickly learned to hold on to all of those things because as soon as we needed it, you know, it was there. And, you know, now we've kind of held on to so much things for the business that it's just as much as the stuff that we have for the house. Oh but my goodness. I think it if you guys so go stuff. and check out this video here that um, Miss Erica put together, you can probably check that out in the description. But um, I think going to go look at the RVs and RV shopping was definitely one of the things that we probably should have been done. Um, just for the simple fact is, you know, we have a realistic space or idea of what the space would be like so that we'll know what we could take along in some of our most important things or what would be like the most important things for us. Absolutely. So be realistic about your space, knowing that downsizing is a mother. It really is. It, it's just, yeah, it's a thing. And getting rid of what you don't need, keeping what you do need, and packing for the season you plan on leaving. So we're planning on leaving the end of March, 1st of April. So I know a lot of stuff that I have now, I may not even use it. I can get rid of it now. And then if I need it later, I can come back and get it or I can just buy some more. So being realistic about your space, like he said, if you kind of have an idea of what kind of trailer or rig or RV you're looking to purchase and you take a look at it, gauge your space, okay? And another thing, be realistic about how much you're gonna take because you have a tow capacity, mm -hmm. right? And so you can only tow X, Y, Z. And if you're like packing it full of stuff, you're gonna go over your tow weight and it's, it's just a headache. So don't do that. Tip number one, downsize, be realistic about what you're gonna take with you and just hurry up and get out there before you accumulate more stuff. Okay, you guys, tip number two is be realistic about your budget. Okay, so 
one of the things we've been doing to add to our budget is being that we haven't to downsize, we're looking to see what we have that we know we're not going to use that we can sell on Marketplace. Marketplace has, has become the new Craigslist. So take a picture, post it on Marketplace, it'll be gone by nighttime. Take that money, add to your budget. But as we've been looking, I think one of the realizations that we have come to is that budget matters. It really does matter. Okay, now if you're like us, you're kind of on the poor side, and budget matters, right? For a whole nother reason, it matters. And so we were thinking, okay, pros and cons. Yes, if we get a new one, we're pretty much ready to go. But it, it's factory cookie cutter. It's it's what the the manufacturers telling us we should have. It's their style. Yes, under the hood, mechanically, you know, we probably have a little peace of mind and we can kind of get out there and go. But at the same time, our goal for RVing is to be debt free, you know, to be able to enjoy life without worrying about how we're going to pay for the house, if that makes any sense. So the more stuff you can sell and set your budget aside and give yourself a realistic date to leave the more you're able to add to your budget. So what we're doing is uh, we set a budget and we're looking and we're trying to see if it makes more sense for us to put the money down on a new one and just pay 200 a month or whatever, or if it's better if we just take all the money, purchase something and then kind of make it our own. So we're still kind of on the fence with that and we still have enough time to kind of see uh, when and where we want to go first and that's going to be the fun part i mean to me that's a no-brainer of where we're going to go when we pull out we, we can go anywhere we want pretty much so the key is have a realistic budget know that the lower the budget the more work sweat equity you will be putting into it not that it's a bad thing just know that that is a thing okay and when you have a low budget the first question you want to ask is, is there water damage? People will not tell you that. We have went and looked at some trailers where there was like obvious water damage. And they were like, oh yeah, uh, that's been fixed. And you can see the drip as they're talking. So it's like, yeah, okay, that's fixed. And cause see, when you get into that reno, you're looking at mold, you're looking at not maybe maybe it's not just that one space maybe it's spread in places you can't even see and it just becomes a headache so budget matters 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 for two reasons it matters for what you want to get and it matters for you to be realistic of what it is that you want because once you finish putting your sweat equity into it you then have to leave so you got to have money to leave with. You got to have gas. So tip number two, have a realistic budget. If you don't mind sweat equity, you're really handy. You got tools. You can do that. Man, make a video. We would like to see it. Okay. I, you know, and, and the thing is that I really like this particular tip because um, I think it kind of goes hand in hand a little bit with downsizing, but I think... Um, Realistically, we all got stuff in that we don't want to um, really sometimes let go, you know what I mean? But I think stuff is ultimately what hinder us from being able to go and do things that we want to do. So with that in mind, going uh, segueing off of what Erica said earlier about the manufacturers, you know, making these vans outfitted for a living, but in their own particular way. Um, just today, um, at this particular dealership we looked at, um, I saw a couple of vans that, the layout and the things that it had, you know, great, we need all of those. We need a shower, we need somewhere to cook. Absolutely, we need, somewhere we need to a sleep. shower. And those things, you know, were just cramped feeling to me versus you know you see other builds on youtube here and people have a certain layout but i think also ultimately when you can customize it yourself it's because you can put in place things that you want that you're going to use in the way that you're going to use those things so some people might not like over the the, the counter you know storage some people might like it low or under the bed in the garage area so forth but I will say um, 
downsizing and keeping in mind that a lot of things that you have inside of your RV or pretty much furniture already. You already got a couch and, you know, all of those things. So if not, you can build your own um, and make it into what you need it to because the space is going to be dramatically smaller than your typical home. And that makes sense because the goal is to live, you know, to, to get out and have an adventure. And sometimes stuff does uh, tie us yeah, to a certain way. space. So sometimes it's okay to purge things and and move forward in a new direction. If you're watching this video, you're already thinking like that, right? You're already thinking, dude, I really need to change because I, I can't do this anymore. We totally understand that. And that is why we're moving in that direction. And we're just making these tips because as we're taking this journey, we're learning a lot about our budget. We're learning a lot about downsizing. We're learning a lot, period. And we just kind of want to share these things with you to kind of give you something to think about as far as that's concerned. And hopefully they'll help you as you start your journey or start thinking about moving in this direction as well. So tip number two, be realistic about your budget. Um, if you're okay with sweat equity, the lower you can go. The, the more you're not okay with sweat equity, the higher your budget needs to be. And uh, one thing I thought of while he was talking and he mentioned something about the design and the layout, nobody wants a cookie cutter place. Right. I mean, even your apartment is, is, is tailored to you. And I like vintage, like I like the old style Winnebago, but I want the inside to be modern right you want it to have a little character and when you buy stuff brand new the character is not there it's just uh bells and whistles pretty shiny and, and I polished think that's what i was trying to say you know so to speak and, and what i was uh speaking on earlier is just the same thing it was very cookie cutter I think. yeah i mean you can make it your own but you're, you're going to be putting more money in behind more money right and so uh it, those are dude those are things to think about and we're just putting it out there because those are the things we're thinking about in this process too. Okay, so let's get on to tip number three. Okay, tip number three, uh, map out where you wanna start to go, okay? Cause that matters. Um, we are hoping to be on the road the end of March, hoping to be on the road the end of March, 1st of April. And we know that that's spring. So some places have not thawed out yet. Some places like we went to Wyoming, um, in 2020 and even there there was snow on the ground in some places right in so, June. yeah so it's like be realistic of that so if you want to leave first of March just know that there are some places still experiencing winter and if you have not outfitted your rig or your camper or your RV or whatever it is you're driving to be winterized you might want to steer clear from those areas until they have completely thought out. And one of the things that we have uh, done in our in our travels, just period, that just is good practice, is doing a little research on where to stay. So um, as we were talking about before a budget and, and what kind of RV you get, some RV parks require that your RV is a certain year and in, in, in older or in younger. So you might have a 1977, but they might have a policy that only 2013s can park there. So you kind of want to know that kind of stuff ahead of time. Um, they have the National Park uh, Pass, and those are awesome because you can primitive camp in certain places. Highly recommend yes, the, uh, yes. the National Park. We went to Yellowstone, and I was so jelly because everybody was camping and they had their RVs and they were just parking in these beautiful places and we were driving so we had to drive all the way back to our hotel where they were able to kind of stay and enjoy the park so one of the things you want to do is make sure that you do some research on where you're going and be mindful of that time of the year whether these places are open and available so for me if I say for whatever reason I wanted to go to Kansas right which i don't but if i did i wouldn't go in september because guess what that's tornado season for kansas and i'm in a metal container i don't want to be in kansas in that's september right i may not want to be down in miami in hurricane season 
you know, just like I wouldn't want to be in Montana during blizzard season. So kind of keeping in mind where you're going, the season that it is, and kind of familiarizing yourself with places that you can stay. Now, I did primitive camping. Like I liked to be desert in the bright sky and all that kind of stuff. And so you want to make sure that if those that's the kind of um, camping you want to do, then check out those places, make sure that they're available, you know, find out where they are. Join some Facebook groups. They have like nomad groups. They have groups for people that travel to state parks. And that helps a lot because you can kind of gauge where people are during certain times of the season and what's going on there and decide where you want to go before you even pull out. So doing some research on where you're headed to is 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 awesome. It is very good. So I, I would recommend that before um, just packing up and then getting in the car and saying, now what? Uh, do some also, research. Also, I would say, you know, um, just speaking off of outfitting your rig so to speak um that you know like erica was saying earlier that if your rig is not outfitted to be in certain areas then you probably wouldn't want to take it in certain places you know because you don't want to end up having a, a tow bill that i'm pretty sure would be up there um not or the only, house being in the shop <laughs> right right you know because you you betting on everything when you, you kind of live in uh this lifestyle um also, I would just say uh, steer clear of places that you may be unfamiliar with, you know, um, if your rig is not nomad condition, because I think that requires solar power and, you know, solar generators and stuff like that. Uh, pretty much house grade things that you would use um, if you're not going to always be at an RV or an RV park, um, which I personally wouldn't mind if our rig um, kind of really did have both options, you know, whether we had the, the 120 hookup, uh, the other inlet for shore power to be able to plug in at RV park because we may want to enjoy some outdoor activities at some places because I'm sure. we do like outside a lot. And, and there's safety at numbers. You don't always want to go rogue. You right. don't always want to spend the night in Walmart parking lot, right. Right. you know. So um, like you were saying, I know that um, if you do decide to do primitive camping and you don't have solar panels, it's not something you could do like for a long time yeah, you could probably generator. do a night if you have a generator right. you know but um like you said just kind of know your 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 camper know your rig know your rv or whatever it is that you're driving and know its limitations and if that's something you're interested in make sure you take care of those things before you pull off and like I said, I will put a link below to the pass that you can get for the national parks. It's just great to have anyway. Even if you weren't in an RV, you were thinking true. about doing some uh, family trips this summer. We weren't in an RV. And, and we had it, we yeah. We had it, you know, and it really was one of those things that I didn't know anything about until we actually got it. And when we got it, I just... Ooh, and we drove to California. Yeah. And we were able to like go that through the cool. state parks and just show our pass. So in the long run, it saved us some money yeah. because you, you have to pay to go into, you know, all these national parks. Mm -hmm. So we were just able to, by the time you use it once or twice, it's paid for itself. So it's awesome. Now, a little nugget here. If you take grandma with you, she can get a pass free for life. And you know, that'll save you a little 85 bucks. But anyway, that's tip number totally three. Totally yeah, you can tell them I said <laughs> Grandma's in the back, you can ask her. All right, so that's tip number three. And we're gonna move on to tip number four. I know this video is pretty long. We're gonna take a minute and thank you so much for being with us and ask you to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. Also, you can check out our Patreon page if you wanna become a crew member or even a producer. We have some fun perks that we'll be sharing with you guys as our community grows, you'll have community access. And also, we will be sending out those who do the second level and the third level as producers, we will be sending you you out a postcard fun pack and you're saying what is a po postcard fun pack well when you subscribe 
wherever we are, we will send you a postcard from there with a packet, with a map and all the fun things to do in that area. So if you're thinking about planning a trip, guess what? You have a friend that's already been there. So you can hop on over to our Patreon page, which is Patreon and Erica Vision and check it out. Check it out. We'd love to have you be a part of the tribe and a part of our family. We'll be putting videos there that will not be on YouTube and some behind the scenes stuff and some extra content as we are out on our travels. And you do not want to miss that because you never know where we're going to end up. And that is just the truth. All right. Hit that notification bell. And let's get on to tip number four. Okay, you guys, here's tip number four. And this is the one we get a lot from our families, okay? So we have pretty good jobs and everybody wants to know why we want to scrap our jobs to go live in an RV like a bunch of homeless people. There's some good looking homeless people if they live in an RVs, I just want to say that. But anyways, they want to know, what are you going to do to support yourself? How are you going to live? Well, let me tell you, there are plenty of opportunities to work while you're out there. One of them is working at a KOA. They have a little bit of a membership fee and it's good for the whole year, but guess what? They have a job board. You can go on the job board and they have jobs in different areas, different KOAs. You can pick uh, a season, like if I, we wanted to work spring in Maine or the summer, you work like three or four months at that particular KOA, you get your lot rent free, they give you a stipend for working there, and your job might be grounds where you're just pretty much riding around on a golf cart picking up trash or cleaning the bathrooms and you only have to work three days a week or four days a week, or you might be checking guests in and showing them where their space is. That is just one idea, okay? So if uh, you are looking for a change of pace and you don't mind doing those things, and some of them only require one person to do it. So if only one person has to do it, the other person does not. They don't expect you to work every single day, so it's not a nine to five, Monday through Friday. It's usually a couple hours a day, maybe two or three times a week, and you get the benefit of that. They also have work farms. There are some people who work on other people's farms, whether it's grooming horses, and then they give them a space to park and they can do that for free. So those are just ideas how people make their way on the road. Another one is Instacart. People sleep on that, okay? So you could do Instacart. It's pretty much turning on your app and delivering a few groceries, making some money, and being able to have some traveling money because really that's what you're, you're needing. You're needing traveling money and a little bit of emergency money if you need a tire or something to that effect. So you have places like Ship and, and uh, Instacart that you can do. You can do Uber Eats and stuff like that if you have your car. So now the world is not set up to where you have to check in at a job in order to uh, support yourself. You can turn it on and turn it off and pick whatever borough you're in or whatever area you're in, make some extra money and turn it off. Also, if you have an online presence, okay? So like this video, for instance, a lot of people travel and they vlog their travels and you may not be a person who's ready to dump everything and move into an RV, but you might be a person who wants to watch somebody else do it and support them in, in their dream. And so there are different ways to, to do that. You can blog, you can write, you can guess on different things go to RV shows, you can get sponsors, and so on and so forth. That is like the holy grail of, of traveling, but there are some common people things that you can do. I know that Amazon, even around Christmas time, hires full-time RVers to work, and they help with their lot rent, and you get a bonus for staying for the whole season. If you're in Florida, Disney hires full-time RVers, and you can work for them three or four months and make a check and then still be able to travel. So there are things that you can do. If it's something you want to do, trust me, you'll find a way to do it. You just have to have a dream. And don't let anybody talk you out of it. Just because they can't see it, doesn't mean it's not there. That is very true. I will say that because um, I've, not because I wanted to, had the opportunity to sleep in a vehicle. Um, <laughs> but, you know, not, you know, just all seriousness, you know, not really knowing that 
there were things that people used to outfit the vehicle to be able to live in. I was just sleeping in it. And the more that, you know, we kind of started, me and Erica, you know, talking about this RV thing. Um, the RV thing became something that I was interested in because I liked the fact that you can live in it. It was like a little compartmentalized clubhouse on wheels, you know, or something like that. But I also started to see the benefits of having uh, an RV, especially if you were looking for a change of pace in life or if you were like us and just wanting to see the next thrill and adventure because I have saw some of the most amazing places with this woman right here. And my eyes have witnessed some of the most beautiful landscape that this, this world and this land has to offer. And I would rather see that from an RV window any day than to drive across the country in a car or to even fly over it because yeah. we've flown over the same landscapes and it's just not, not the same. Say, you miss it. Um, Which brings us to tip number five, why we want an RV. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's really what I'm actually kind of leading into right getting into right there and i would i would say first of all my reason for wanting the rv is to just have a free life to live to be able to enjoy and learn more about myself um and to have a life a healthy relationship with erica to where we could get out and do things with each other because we, there are things that we um in this life we enjoy doing like photography. Photography is very, very, very therapeutic uh, for me, especially when I'm with her because not only do I feel like I have a teacher that when I don't know things about this fancy camera or even if it's just, you know, using Photoshop or anything, um, I know that I can always go to her and she takes some of the most wonderful photos. Make sure y'all check her out on Instagram too. E-H photo. Yep, make sure y'all check her out. Yeah, I love photography. She's very good at that. And you know what? Some of the places we've seen, the camera does not do it justice. Right. I need to say that because you can get out and, and sometimes I just have to put the camera down because I, can, I can't capture the, blue, the beauty of what we're looking at at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And um, our lives were kind of high stress, you know, just the day to day grind. And it just gives us something to look forward to, to kind of slowing down and enjoying life. The kids are grown. The, our last two are moving out Friday. Uh, I got a little mixed emotions about that because uh, I love them and I'm going to miss them. But I'm excited for them and their next step. But I'm also excited for us because this gives us an opportunity to kind of explore things and go places and do things and be able to do them together and just take a breath. You know, this last two years have been very difficult, right? If you get a cold, you're almost stressed and hoping that you don't die, right? COVID has taught us a lot of things that life is just way too short, right? And so we wanna take this opportunity to just not wait till we retired and old to try to enjoy life, but now why we can enjoy it and have fun and and just do it. I mean, it's just, I don't know how to explain it. When it's in you, it's it's there, it's nagging. It's kind of like the time is perfect for yeah. us too, you know, especially being that the, the kids do have uh, relatively good jobs and they can sustain their own lifestyle with no, with no problem, you know, and it's set up really right now to where we can do it now. And it's, you know, we're both working um, and we're not looking to take off right away because there needs to be some type of cushion money. Because we're not rich. And right. that's one of the things I want you guys to know. Because sometimes you watch people's video and they got like thousands of dollars because what they're not telling you is that they sold their house. Right, and they got twenty thousand dollars from selling their house, and they went and bought something and spent eleven thousand dollars on it, and they have ten thousand dollars to travel with. That's not our case. Our lease is up on our apartment. Right. Our children are grown, and we have just decided we have nothing to lose, now never. and we're just going to take this opportunity to enjoy each other's company and travel. 
and we, I, I can't hammer in your head enough. Just do a little research. Don't let anybody talk you out of your dream. You don't have to be rich. Before we even did this, we were taking vacations and people would ask us, how are y'all doing that? It's priorities. It was a priority to us to take our kids on vacation, do stuff with them, show them this world outside of our neighborhood. And we're just excited to have the world as our playground and explore. Now, I know we've held you guys way too long and we thank you so much for just hanging in there with us. Uh, we're hoping that you will take this journey with us and continue to walk this path with us. And if you have any questions for us, please leave them in the comment section below. We're gonna be putting out, like I said, more content. We are wanting you to take this journey with us. So if you are wanting to support this movement and take this journey with us, please uh, don't hesitate to uh, become a Patreon member. Also subscribe and hit that notification button. And we will see you soon because we're gonna be cranking out more and more videos to show you our journey all the way to our new home and when we take off. Also, um, head over to my page if you guys would like. Um, I also have my own YouTube channel where I will be doing similar things to what Erica does and you know, blogging my own experiences uh, with this journey that we're about to embark on. But if you guys want to check out some of my other videos from previous travels across the United States, yes. then definitely do that. Uh, you can follow my YouTube channel at Hosey Travels. That's H-O-L-S-E-Y. And I'll put a link to that below so you can just click right. it and go over to it. And, and I really appreciate you guys watching us. And as you can see, we have some other videos of places we've already been from his tra well, our travels together, but his videos as well as mine. You can check those out. Like them, share them, do whatever you need. But thank you so much for now, and we will see you in our next video. Bye.